recording starts now. Welcome everyone to our information session on the University of Bedfordshire's BSc in Information Technology program. My name is Ravi Raghunath and I'll be your host for today's session. Just a bit about me, well, I'm the Executive Director at CTS College, all right, and we'll talk a bit more about CTS College as we go along. In terms of today's session, it's expected to run for just over an hour. Of course, you are free to ask questions at any time that's convenient to you. You don't need to wait until the end. And in terms of what we'll be covering today, we look at why study a BSc in information technology. And there are many options in Trinidad. Why study with the University of Bedfordshire and even CTS College? And what are the features of the program? What am I going to learn? How will this fit into my life? What support will CTS and the university provide? And then where will I graduate? And am I eligible to study? What are the entry requirements? And how much will this cost? And then after, when can I start? All right, so those are the things we are going to look at in today's session. As I said, feel free to interject and ask questions, all right? Okay, so let's get into why study the BSc. And this was really the icebreaker that we had. And a few of you would have responded um, fortunately, we didn't get responses from ev everyone, but that's because we had to start the session. But what some of you would have responded is simply what we have here as well. And over the years, we've been asking students as well, why study for your degree? And then why chosen field as well? And these are some of the things people will typically see. For many people, they want to study because they're seeking a promotion. And I think Jerome mentioned that in his, his conversa conversation. Many of you looking at career change, and I think Ariana, and I, I'm not sure if it was Kelly, or one other person as well had suggested career change as well as one of theirs. I think we all could do with an increase in salary, right? And therefore, we study for higher qualification so that we could gain that promotion, gain a higher salary as well. As you would have mentioned as well for your son, he, even the option to start or grow his own business. So he's becoming qualified so that he can have those opportunities. For many of us, and if any one of you are parents as well, you'd understand that, you know, you want the best for your kids and even for ourselves. And, you know, maybe having a degree is something you would have envisioned growing up. And this is the opportunity as well for personal achievement. For many of you doing it as well, because you're looking at improving your experience in the field, right? Naturally, the better you are in the field, the more qualified or the better your, your ability to operate at work as well. And of course, it will enhance your employability. Now. Let's look at the case of having a, a degree. For many students, they see a degree as a cost. And what I wanted to do, the purpose of this slide here and the next couple of slides is to show you that really you should be able to look at the IT degree as more of an investment rather than a cost. I do think many of us, when we think of an IT degree, we look at you know, the opportunities from a, like a cost perspective, from a financial perspective. What we do, the only finance we see is how much it will cost us rather than see it as an investment. And this exercise is really to help us to see an IT degree as more of an investment. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the OJT salary chart, right? Using the OJT salary chart, we're going to look at what, what would the salary is for an OJT person with CXE passes versus an OJT salary with a bachelor's degree. If you take a look, all right, just offhand, by the way, can you suggest, without trying to do all the mathematics in here from this, but can you, if, with, without seeing these figures, if someone were to ask you how much more in a year you would earn as an OJT with a bachelor's degree versus an OJT with, an, with just secondary school passes, any, any thoughts on what that figure might have been for the year, how much you would have earned more for the year? And I'm not asking you to calculate it mathematically. I'm just using, using your own perception of what you thought it might have been, how much more you think you would be earning with a degree versus without your degree as an OJT. Feel free to take off your mic from silent and respond. I would say at least four times. Uh, about four times as much. Mm -hmm. All right, any other thoughts? Well, using this here, we see that you, now remember OJT is really a starting salary, right? So as an OJT with CXC, you'll get $3,025 per month. With a bachelor's degree, you'll get $7,562 per month. Uh, so comparing as well, how much more would you earn in a month? In one month, you'll earn $4,500 more with a bachelor's degree versus CXC as an OJT. How much more would you earn in one year? 
Well, in one year, you earn $54,000 more. Not how much you earn in total, how much more you earn. Now imagine pocketing $54,000 more in a year. Imagine now in terms of that could probably assist you in buying your car. A couple of times it'll buy you your house, a land, sorry, and several times more, maybe a house, right? So, and if you put it over your, your working life, let's suppose you work for 40 years. If you, you continued as an OGT with CXE versus an OGT with a bachelor's degree, over 40 years, it works out over $2 million more. That's the difference in salary as an OGT with just CXE passes versus an OGT with a bachelor's degree. Now, realistically, we know that if you have a bachelor's degree, your job up, the chances of getting a job, the opportunities for salary increase, etc., are far greater with a bachelor's degree. So it is expected that you're not going to continue earning a, a OGT salary for the rest of your life. But the reality is that this salary would increase and increase much more after you're employed because you will get promotions and all of those. And therefore, this, num this figure will actually increase dramatically and would be probably much more than four times as you would have indicated as well. So why study with the University of Bedfordshire? There are other options available as well. So let's talk a bit about the University of Bedfordshire. For many people, they may not be familiar with Bedfordshire simply because there's no English football club in the Premiership League called Bedfordshire, right? You're familiar with the Liverpools, United, Manchester, and etc. So those are the places we'd be more familiar with from football. But the University of, of Bedfordshire is actually one of the top, ranked in the top 6% of universities in the world. They actually have over, um, they have a, a heritage going back to over 100 years. More than 20,000 students from over 120 countries. And that includes Trinidad and Tobago. In the UK, they have five campuses at Luton, Bedford, Potteridge, Islesburg, and Milton Keynes. They have partners in all over, all over the place. Trinidad actually was their first partner in the west of England. So now that they have partnered with us, they started partnering with other schools as well on this side of the horizon. As well, as I said, they're ranked in the top 6% of universities as well. And they, they won the Queen's University Award also. They're ranked in several different areas as well. All right. So as you can see here, there's numerous rankings that they're ranked in. Now, why study at CTS College? CTS College, how, um, for many of you, you may be familiar with CTS College because you may have heard a friend talk about it. You may have seen the ads as well. But, you know, tell us a, a bit more about CTS College. So I'll share with you a bit here. We are a private institution. Our focus has largely been in business and IT, where we offer programs from undergraduate to postgraduate programs. But we've also expanded both downwards as well as in terms of in depth as well as in width. And we started offering courses from primary to secondary as well. Our intention is to basically provide education from the cradle to the grave. We have over 20 years in the education industry where ACTT recognized. And we are, as I said, we offer a range of different programs, particularly in professional development courses as well. We've won over 88 World Prizes with AB. We've won 45 university awards with the University of Hertfordshire, as well as we've won 11 ACTT awards for student support services. So we've, this, is, this side is our bragging slide in terms of our awards. We have 14 years of experience delivering BSc program and BSc in IT. So we've been working previously with the University of Hertfordshire to deliver BSc in information technology. And over the years, we've had a pass rate of over 85% with over 2,000 2, applicants, over 1,700 students graduating with more than, but right now, 483 students graduating with first class honors. So you can see we have a lot of experience delivering a BSc in information technology. Just a, a bit with the history with CTS and University of Bedfordshire. We started working with the University of Bedfordshire in 2017, and we added their IT program. We started offering the IT degree in in 2020, in February 2020, we started offering their program. So this will be the second intake or the second cohort that we've been delivering with you specific to the University of Bedfordshire. But as indicated, we have over 14 years experience in the delivering IT qualifications. Just a bit about the features of the program now. In terms of this program, it's fully accredited. It's globally accessible. It's practical or work applied. It's accelerated and also it's an affordable investment. And for each of these five areas, I'll share with you some more information. So we'll get into each area, right, of these five. 
In terms of accreditation, the program is fully accredited. In the UK, there's the Quality Assurance Agency, and they're basically the body, if you want to consider them the equivalent, one of the equivalents of like ACTT. So they are, they are, they are an independent body to establish quality in higher education as well. Also, the program, the University of Bedfordshire, is, is recognized with Accreditation Council of Trinidad and Tobago. And that one would concern you a lot as well. If you're looking at traveling, so a lot of students often ask us, you know, if I do this program, would I be able to travel to the US, to Canada, and other countries as well, and the qualification be recognized? And the answer is yes. We've had students who've graduated with the University of Bedfordshire MBA program, and they are in, currently in Canada and in the US as well. Not sure if you're familiar, but Canada right now is recruiting a lot of um, professionals and a lot of students who've graduated from our programs, both the University of Hertfordshire, University of Bedfordshire, the AIB programs have, have migrated to those countries as well using their qualifications. So it is recognized in those countries also. What we're going to do now is share with you a bit about the five the five A's that we talked about. And in terms of accreditation as well, the program also in terms of its transnational quality, everything we do has to be scrutinized by the university. So in terms of transnational quality, this is where every bit of our marketing and promotion is approved by the university. All admissions are approved by the university. So when you apply, you are accepted by the university. And only after being accepted by the university, then you can be accepted by us. We cannot accept you without the university accepting you. In terms of faculty approval, all our staff are approved by the university. All our teaching materials are provided by the university as well. All assessments are set by them, as well as they carry out annual audits to ensure we do what we say we will do as well. And you as a student get to do continuous feedback and review on the program as well to ensure that they're constantly listening to what you have to say so that they can enhance what they're offering. The program is also globally accessible. There are over 20,000 students in over 120 countries enrolled in their programs. They have partnership with China, the Middle East, Europe, etc., as well as Trinidad and Tobago. There's an online learning environment, and this is the part that makes it globally accessible for you guys. Because apart from our classes at CTS College, you'll have access to an online learning environment called Brio, which, where you would have access to all your lecture notes, you will submit all your assignments, you'll have access to the university's learning resources as well there. So it's an, you're, you're, you're going to be part of a learning management system as well. So separate to CTS provision, the university provides this online learning platform as well. And of course, you have access to the student information desk 24 seven from anywhere in the world. The program is practical. And after delivering our first semester of classes, I can, I can assuredly say that it is extremely practical. In, every one of the, in each of the units, you're required to do practical stuff. For example, you have to build a database. You have to create a database given a scenario. You have to actually build applications you have to actually design and develop networking solutions, et cetera. So it's an extremely practical solution. So throughout the course, you'll be solving IT-related problems as well. So it's extremely practical. The program is delivered via what we call an accelerated mode. Now, please note, the accelerated mode simply allows you to finish the program over a shorter period of time. However, the, the duration to deliver a subject is the exact same as it's delivered in the UK. Just to share with you a bit, in the UK, an academic year is made up of three semesters. Each semester runs for four months. So in your first four months, you do two subjects or two units as they call it. In your second semester, you do the other two subjects. So you finish your four subject in eight months and then you go on a break and that break is four months. What we've simply negotiated with the university is that look, that break, let a student choose if they want to go on a break or not. But we would prefer if the student allowed to move to the next level after they've completed the first level. So each level basically is done in eight months, which is two semesters. So if you're finishing year one in eight months, you're finishing year two in eight months, and you're finishing year three in eight months, then roughly three, it's 24 in 24 months, which is two years, you will be completing with your bachelor's degree. And that's why it's an accelerated program. 
is the in terms of this program as well there are different levels and you can enroll directly either in year one or year two or year three based on your previous qualification and experience given that's the case it is, it is now by far the fastest or most accelerated program bachelor's degree in it in trinidad and tobago other programs may take as much as five years all right this program will allow you to complete in just two in in sorry in just two years any questions so far regarding the program in terms of its affordability i'll get more in terms of the costing etc all right and we've also partnered with gmmb to assist students in obtaining finances as well but we'll go through in terms of the pricing closer to the end of the course now how is this program structured in terms of its structure there are three levels well there's also a bridging level which we'll discuss but the the degree itself is made up of three levels level four which is year one is made up of four units a unit and a subject is the same difference there's a level five which is made up of four subjects as well and the level five is equivalent to year two and the year three which is the final year of the degree also called level six is made up of four units now i'll tell you in terms of how you can enroll directly in each level so ideally if you're starting at level four level four will be for persons who have either you have advanced level or you've done a tertiary program it doesn't have to be in it you could have done any program that will be considered at a level or higher that will be accepted if you have it work experience that is also accepted if you've done it certifications that's also accepted but if you have just general work experience you can also start the program so general work experience i'm using here is non-it so if you have non-it experience you can also start at level four now in order to start at level five, a candidate can enroll directly at level five if they have completed the level four qualification or they have done an IT qualification that is equivalent to level four. So if you've done another IT qualification with another awarding body that's equivalent to level four, the university will consider you for entry directly into level five. Alternatively, if you have two or more years of IT experience and you have IT certifications, you can be considered as direct entry for level five as well. To enroll directly into level six, you would need to have an associate degree or a higher national diploma or a level five diploma in IT. Alternatively, if you don't have these, but you have over six years, six or more years of IT work experience and you have a host of IT certifications, consideration will be given to allow you to enroll directly into level six. So you see here, you can enroll directly into the different levels based on your previous qualification experience. Now, what if you don't have these? What if you've just finished CSEC or so, or you don't have any work experience at all? Well, that's where the bridging program comes in. The bridging program now is to assist persons who don't satisfy any of the routes that we mentioned here. But typically the persons who are enrolling in the bridging program are those who, are, who have just finished CSEC they are the ones who would enroll but persons with work experience ideally would start at level four so the bridging program is really geared for those who did not meet the entry requirements to start at level four it's as i said it's ideally for csec holders right who haven't done who don't have any work experience so based on this anyone can start the program in terms of the bridging program the bridging program runs for four months just one semester and there's one subject you need to complete in the bridging program once you've completed that subject then you can start into level four which is year one so those are the different levels so bridging level four level five level and level six or bridging year one year two year three and where you could start in any one of these levels depending on your previous work experience it qualifications etc now what is each level what would you learn in these different levels so in terms of the program what year one does year one focuses on the the foundation skills so basically you'll be introduced to software you'll explore the principles of hardware in terms of how computers are built how computers work you learn about databases you learn about sql queries you will learn java programming you will learn to build databases in microsoft access as well you learn to use um sql using oracle also so these are some of the different things you would learn as well as networking if i had not mentioned it as well so year one is more foundation learning the different areas level five now which is year two 
will focus on more software design and development work. So each year you will, you will learn coding. You'll be taught coding from scratch. So you don't need to know coding before. We will guide you as you go along. But you'll be developing IT systems as well. You're developing database um, solutions to systems as well as IT systems. You're designing systems also. So designing and building are two different things as well. Uh, just a note, in terms of design, the difference between design and, and building or developing, think of building a house. The designer is like the architect. So the architect role is to design what the house would look like. And if you've seen Property Brothers, you'll see where they do these sketches of the house. It's all three-dimensional, etc. It's virtual. It's not the real house. But they show you images of what the house can look like. That's the role of design. So even in information technology, design plays such a crucial role. So human-computer design, human-computer interaction is a very important topic because you could, you could build an application, but if it's not well-designed, a lot of people will reject it. So the success of an application is often based on good design principles. All right, so you will learn about both design and development in year two. You will be told what to do. Like, for example, your assignments, you'll be told to build this, to develop this, etc. Year two, year three is where, the, where it gets a bit more independent, where you can choose your area and you have to actually develop an application of your choice. You would also learn more project management skills now. So your skills are at a higher level in year three. So you would learn about IT project management. And you'll also learn about research methods and take your undergraduate project. And for your undergraduate project, you'll have to develop an application to solve, to solve a problem as well as deliver a technical report as well to go along with it. So these are the subjects in the different levels. So in the bridging program, you'll be doing computer systems development and data transmission. In level four, you have these four subjects here, which is more introduction and you've seen fundamentals, you're learning programming, computer system structure. Whereas in year five, you learn human computer interaction, the IT industries project, web technologies and systems development. And in year six, you'll do advanced IT research methods, social and professional project management, as well as your undergraduate project that you'll be required to undertake. So those are the different units. Just wanting to note though, when we first started, Lazing with university and we looked at just four courses in each year i taught initially well four courses that's not a whole lot though but when we started when we started going through the unit guides for each module and now that we're delivering it as well what they have done is they have in a in a traditional school they will separate each one into individual subjects what they have done in one of their subject you will be doing like two to three different subject areas as well so for example it, if you're doing students in doing computer system structure, they are doing a, an ent half of the course is on database design and the other half is networking. <laughs> so it's two different aspects, two different independent things brought together in one course. So that's how it's done. And that's why, you know, you, the number of courses might be few, but the, what you learn is a lot. The, the other thing about it as well, one of the advantage of having fewer number of courses is that it reduces your fees as well because there's a tuition cost attached to each subject. So if they have more subject, then you'll have more tuition fees to pay. So reducing the number of subject, but not reducing your learning content is, is what they have simply done so that you can benefit from lower pricing. Now, how can I fit this into my busy lifestyle? Because many of you are working, you have, you have other stuff that you need to do as well. You work shift, etc. How can you fit this into your lifestyle? Well, first of all, there are three intakes for the year. So if you miss one intake in four months time, there's another intake starting. So there's February, there's June, and there's October. So right now we're focusing on the June intake. In terms of classes, each subject, so you're doing two subjects or two units at a time. Each subject has a two hour session, so done on a Saturday. So ideally, you are doing just four hours of class for the week. Isn't that good? So that fits in into your, into your lifestyle. So that's contact hours. But apart from that, you will be spending a lot of time doing research, do, working on reviewing the course material, etc. But I want to also add the following as well, all right? So you're doing two units, two, two, two hour sessions per week, but Please note, when you have assignments, etc., we would be meeting with you separate from these sessions because your assignment is priority to us. So we are not doing the assignment for you, but we are working along, providing all the support, assistance, guidance you would need to ensure that you complete your assignments and you succeed. 
So we would have additional sessions, but these sessions are not like, we will cut those as and when needed. All right, so those are driven often by the student or by the lecturer who recognizes the additional need. We may, you may find that some of these sessions you don't need because you are on top of things. Often we have students who are learning at different rate and therefore some of these sessions are to help the students who are probably in need of more help than the other. And that's part of the support system that we have in place to meet you at the point of your need. Each unit is assessed via two to three assignments. In most cases, a unit has two assignments. So you'll have assignment one, which is due maybe after six weeks and assignment two, which is due at the end of maybe the 12th or 13 week or so. So that's typically how it is assessed. The, the semester runs are roughly, roughly 15 weeks, right? There are 12 teaching weeks, but there's often a break sometimes in between. Now, please know this is on the university side. We often don't use the break and we continue to teach, do additional sessions to help students as well, okay? However, between semesters, you'll usually have a two, a two week break between semesters. I'm seeing there's a question. So I'm just gonna fill the, the question as well, all right? Um, can you do more than two modules per semester? And the answer is, is no at the moment. And the reason why it's no is because the university is also concerned about the workload. In terms of delivery, we are only offering two modules in a semester. So therefore it's difficult to do more than two because we are only offering two. But the other thing as well, the university has a regulation where you can only do up to 60 credits in a semester. Each unit is 30 credits. So you, by doing two units, you are fulfilling the maximum workload, which is 60 credits. This 60 credits is equivalent to doing a program full-time. So you are, doing a, you are doing it on Saturdays, yes, but you're doing it on a full-time basis. Now, just to know the difference here, what we call full-time is going to school like secondary school where Monday to Friday in classes. That's not what the university considers full-time. Full-time part-time is determined by the university. It's based on the workload, the number of credits that you're doing. So if you're doing 60 credits, then that's full-time, right? A full-time workload. Now I'll share with you. It is some work, but it's very doable for working persons. Most of the people in the program currently are working. In fact, the most successful people in the, in the program are the ones who are working versus, there are some students who are not working, but the working ones are actually outperforming the non-working ones. So that's in terms of your units. How will you be assessed? And we indicated that you'll have at least two assessments for each unit, and the assessments may vary. So you may have assessments that's coursework or assignment base. You may have group or individual projects, but please note, if even if you have a group project, you are marked individually, right, for your contribution towards it. You also have a portfolio, which is a combination of several smaller things you have to provide in order to complete a portfolio. You may have to do an essay, which is more like a research, research piece as well, and that's more project related. You may have to do presentation. So right now, students had to do video presentation. Now I'll share with you as well. In terms of these video presentation, what I've found is that it's giving students the ability to improve their, their ability to communicate, their ability to, to do like PowerPoint slides. They're, they're creating videos and presenting them as well. So their articulation skills, their presentation skills are all being enhanced through these. So in these different ways students are assessed, it's, it's enhancing their skills in, in one or more ways as well. So for many students, they might have been uncomfortable doing something. Now they are becoming um, pros at these things. In terms of the focus of the assessment, at level four, the focus of the assessment is really about understanding the fundamental concepts in IT, whereas at level five, you're doing more critical analysis, right? Finding solutions to existing problems. Now, level six is, is you're improving your ability to critically think and evaluate, but also to come up with solutions that are outside of the, the your own. Rather than coming up with solutions to existing problems, you're learning to come up with solutions to new to, to problems that you are recognizing. So your own solution to problems that may not have been solved before. In terms of passing a unit as well, this is the following. The pass mark is 40%. You will have multiple assignments. In order to pass, however, you must your overall score must be 40 or more in order to pass. Okay, so your to or total score from the individual assignments must be 40 or more in order to pass the unit. Feel free, as I said, to ask questions as we go along. Now, what if you fail an assignment or one of the assessments? Now, if you fail an assessment, 
depending on what your overall score is. If your overall score is 40 or more, the university will pass you. However, what would happen is that if you, in certain instances, you may be given a referral where you have to redo an assignment. Now, if you fail a unit, you fail a unit ideally from failing having a score of less than 40 or more, the university offers you what you call a referral. So what a referral is, a referral is simply a second chance to do over the, the, an assignment without repeating the module. So if you fail the module, right, initially, but your mark is less than 40, the university will offer you a referral. If you pass the referral, you pass the module and you don't have to pay to do the referral, nor do you, would you have to pay to repeat because you pass the module. If you fail the referral, however, or you don't submit any assignments, then you would have to repeat the module and you'll have to pay to repeat the module, okay? Now, what about award, the awards that you get? When you finish the program, you could, you could graduate with first class, upper second, lower second, or third class honors. How is your honors classification um, determined? Well, your honors classification is based on the number of credits that you've achieved. So in terms of the number of credits, right? what they would do you need each level has 120 credits so in order to graduate you need a 360 credits in order to graduate to determine your first class honors or so what they do is they use the marks from the from the different levels so the bulk of your mark is from the sorry about that the, the bulk of your mark my apologies guys the bulk of your mark would be from the final level which is level six so what they do they take your best 90 credits which is your best three subjects from from the final year, but it must include your dissertation, which is your project. Your project is mandatory and the other two, two marks. So that's what they do, as well as they use marks from the penultimate stage, which is year two. For a person who's starting directly in year three, however, their classification of degree would be based on their best 90 credits in year three, in which must include, however, the project. So it's the project and the other two units as well that will be considered. Okay. Just a question, okay, Ravi Johnson is answering, assisting me. So Ravi Johnson is assisting me at also answering um, question as well. In terms of what support is available, there are support both from CTS College and from the university. So for example, in terms of support, initially CTS College will, will provide information session and answer all questions regarding to the program. We will submit your application to the university. Once you've enrolled, right, the university will have access, you'll have access to an online learning environment called Brio. Just one second. So you'll have access to the Brio environment. In terms of the Brio environment, you will have, in, you will have access to all your course materials there. You'll have access to the resources, Emerald journals, etc., And you'll also have access to the university lecture resources. At CTS College, our lecturers will have their own, will deliver their own um, slides, etc. Sometimes they use the university slides. Sometimes they develop their own slides. You will have access to these classes. You will have access to the recording from these sessions as well while the recordings are being, while the classes are being done online. So after every class, we will send you a link to the recorded session as well. So if you miss a class, you'll have access to the recording. You'll, have, you'll get access to the lecture notes. We also have an online drive, an online folder where you have, where we've downloaded all the materials and made it available to you as well. So the material from the university's website, we have it available for you, as well as our lecture material, as well as all the video recordings from the classes, all of those are also available to you. So you'll have access to those. You'd also, we'll also provide access to tutorials as well. So you'll have one-on-one -on -one support. So as indicated before, when you have assignments, students may need help, and that help may vary from one method, one in one way or another. We would provide these additional sessions and classes to you at no additional cost. All right, so we help you to ensure that you get all the different support you need to undertake the program. We will also do an induction. We have an induction and an orientation session. By the way, the induction for the program is on Tuesday. And for those of you who are starting in June, we, I will share with you the link for the induction for you to attend. And on Wednesday, we're having a Harvard referencing session as well to prepare you for it. So apart from those also, we have sessions on academic writing as well, and those are all taking place this week. So as I indicated to you, you we will also be conducting an induction. The induction will be Tuesday. So once you are interested in starting for the June intake, 
even though you haven't been accepted as yet, as indicated before, everyone will be accepted to start the program. The question is, will you be accepted directly into, into year one or year two or year three? Well, the university will decide those. But you will have one common induction, and in the induction, we'll go through the entire program. We will also do a Harvard referencing session because you'll be doing academic writing, and you need to properly cite and reference your sources. So we will be covering those. Those will be covered this week. So one is on Tuesday, one is on Wednesday as well. I'm just checking to see if any other questions are specific to me as well. Okay, so thank you, Rav, for assisting and answering questions. What about the lecturers as well? Who are the lecturers? What do they do? All right. What we've tried to do is hire lecturers who are practitioners in the field. So most of our lecturers are industry-based. At the same time, if so the reason is, is that the lecturers practice what they, they preach. So if, for example, you're you're teaching databases, then you've, data, you've, you've de delivered databases, you've built databases, etc. So it's not just a teaching person, but it's someone who also has industry experience so that they can help you relate it to the industry. So that's a bit in terms of our lecturers. So our lecturers actually, we have different lecturers for the different programs. Um, Karen Ramganesh is one such. I'm also assisting lecturing in the program. You also have Fiola. Fiola is also building mobile applications. Also, she's a Java expert. And we also have Chanan Sudama as well, who's delivering courses within the program. So those are some of your lecturers within the program. You'll be provided with a timetable with your list of lecturers by Tuesday for the induction. Now there's the student voice, and each student has representation in the program. So what we do, there's what we call a student council. The student council is where you get to be part of the voice of the students. As a student council, you represent the different students. You will listen to them. You will basically take whatever concerns, whatever improvements as well, and you'll meet with the university also to discuss and to, to form solution to these problems. Naturally, each student can come to us one-on-one -on -one and talk to us about any questions concern they have you don't have to go through the, you don't need to go through the student council or student representative but definitely you can if you're feeling shy to talk to us you have access to the student council and you can also be part of the student council so when you start we give you the option to be part of it as well and you get to listen to what the other students concerns etc and share it with us because the our role and university role is to make your experience the best one possible so that's part of the student voice and you provide feedback to the university as well in terms of their teaching and learning also. Now, what resources would you need for this program? Now, right now it's a little different because the program is offered online because of the whole COVID issue and schools being closed until September. So for this entire semester, it will be all classes will be conducted online. Therefore, you would need access to Wi-Fi resources. You would need to have access to a laptop in order to write your programs, etc. Now, the phone may not be sufficient for some of the things that you need to do. So you can attend classes via your phone, etc. But sometimes to do your coding, you need to install software that are more um, memory intensive. So you may need to have a laptop or a device, a, a computer also, a desktop available for you to be able to complete the assignments. And what about graduating? Where will I graduate? Well, our graduation, you can graduate both at, seat, at the university in Bedfordshire, right, in Luton actually as well as you can graduate at CTS College graduation, which is at Hyatt Regency. Our graduation is typically on the second Sunday in December. I haven't been to the university graduation as yet, but something tells me that our graduation is much more fun than theirs, listening to, to, to their take on graduation as well. But I definitely encourage you to, to go to the UK to graduate, so you can graduate at both, location, both locations. Now, how do I qualify? We mentioned the entry requirements before, but I'm going to, uh, repeat them a bit. In terms of the bridging program, now you don't apply for the bridging program, eh? you apply for, for the level four, level four, which is year one, and if you're not accepted, then you go to the bridging program. So when you're applying, ideally you're not applying for the bridging, you're applying really for level four, which is year one, and if you don't, if, if you're not accepted into year one, then you'll get into the bridging program automatically. So there are no requirements for the bridging program. As I said, this is ideal for candidates without work experience or those who just finished CXC, et cetera, right? Or even if you have no CXC passes or no work experience, this is the level you start. If you're applying here, you need to provide a copy of your ID or your passport, all right? As well as if you've done CSEC, any academic qualifications you have, if you could include those, as well as a copy of your resume along with the completed application form. If you're starting at year four, sorry, level four, which is year one, then ideally you need to show 
either you've done an equivalent to A level, so you need to have a CAPE A levels, or if you don't have that, you need to have done some other tertiary qualification if you provide evidence, or if you don't have that, you can provide general work experience. So if you can provide a job letter, so your job letter from the employer, I don't need to see a salary or anything. We're looking at the fact purely what I want the job letter to state is that you have been employed with the company for since whenever date, since whatever start date, for how many years, etc. Of course, you could use more than one job letters because you may be, you, your, your time at one job may not be enough, so you may need more than one job letter depending. Of course, if you've done any IT certifications or IT qualifications, please include those as well. When you're submitting, you'll submit evidence of these along with your completed application form, as well as your resume. If you could include your resume for me, please, and a copy of your ID. To start at level five, which is year two, well, you need to have either level four diploma or you have work experience with keep as well as, or you could have a combination of IT work experience as well as other academic qualifications. You can use those to get into level five, which is year two. Evidence is required. Now, please note, evidence comes from letters from your employer, etc., not from your resume. So you cannot say, well, look at my resume. It tells you all the work experience I have. The university won't accept that because anyone can create a resume indicating any number of years, any job title, etc. So the supporting evidence has to come from the employer. So you are submitting your supporting evidence with your completed application form with a copy of your ID or passport as well as a copy of your resume. And if you're starting directly in year six, which is level, sorry, level six, which is year three, then you need to have either an associate degree, advanced diploma, or any higher, um, higher national diploma IT qualification. Once you have that, we need a copy of the certificate. If you have the transcript, that's fine. It's not mandatory, but it's helpful. If you have IT work experience, that would help. A job letter would be helpful as well. If you've done IT certs, you can include those as well. And um, so your job letters, if you're using any evidence of, the, of those, you need to provide, as well as your completed application form, copy of your ID or passport, as well as a copy of your resume. Okay, so that's in terms of applying, I need a completed application form, along with supporting evidence for whatever entry, whatever you're using to get into the program, as well as copies of your your resume if you have one, as well as copy of your ID as well, please, okay? Now, in terms of the process, this is how it works. So I just want to guide you. So when you submit your application, CTS is not the one approving it, so I want you to understand the process. So the first thing is, you, you complete your documents, you send it to study at ctscollege.com. Know the email address, right? Study at ctscollege.com. I don't recommend you send it to a specific staff, but send it to study instead. Study is a group of persons who will be able to, uh, be able to, to review applications and be able to provide advice, et cetera, right? Next, once your application is complete, we will submit it to the university and we will advise you as well if it's complete or if it's missing anything. If it's sent to the university, we'll inform you as well. Once it goes to the university, they will then process it. It takes a while there depending, but we are we are advised that we should be getting approvals for, the, for this, this group of application this coming week. Once we get the approval, the university would send to CTS a two-page offer letter. Once we have that offer letter, right, then we will take that offer letter, we will email that offer letter to you. You will then complete the offer letter and return it to us along with our registration form. So with the offer letter, you will indicate if you accept the offer to start, if, you, if you're preferring to start at a later date, so you want to defer, or if you're rejecting totally, you're not interested anymore, you'll include that in the letter and return it to us. If you are starting, then you would need to complete the TNE registration form that will be attached as well. Now, what I will do, once I submit all this stuff to you, I'm going to have a small session. When I submit the offer letter and the registration form to you, I'm going to have a small online session to help everyone to fill out the TNE &E registration form, etc. So we'll collectively do it as an online session, pretty much like this. After you've submitted your stuff, once you have accepted to start, then we submit those to the university and along with your completed form. And then what they will do, they will, they will provide your university login account to Brio, where you will have access to Brio, which is the online environment. Now, please note, once you submit those forms, you're officially a student of, of the university, even though the Brio account will still have to be created, etc. but you're officially a student, 
at, at that point, you are, because you're a student now and you've accepted enrollment, your fees become payable at that point. A lot of students think, well, I have to pay to, to submit my application. No. Please note, payment only becomes due after step five, where you've accepted to start the program. Okay? In terms of the costing, now let's review the costing for the program. Now, the bridging program, there's one unit only. The registration fee is $500 and the tuition fee is $2,000. The university fee is 150 pounds. If you're starting at year one, which is level four, there are four subjects. The registration fee is 500 per semester, but there are two semesters, right? The tuition fee is 2000 per subject, and there are four subjects, so that's $8,000. You're paying 150 pounds to the university per subject, and there are four subjects, so that's 600 pounds. So if you add up the total for level four, which is year one, right now the pound is at, is at a, is very low in relation to what it's been traditionally. It's roughly 8.7 or so. So if you add up all of these here, it works out to under $14,000 you're paying for, for year, year one, roughly 15,000 for year two, and year three will add up to roughly around $24,000 or so. So year two, it's 500 per semester to register. It's 2250 per subject by four subjects, which is works out to 9,000 for tuition. It's 150 pounds per subject to the university by four, which is 600 pounds. In your final year, it's 375 pounds to the university per subject by four subjects. So it's 1500 pounds to the university and CTS tuition fee is 2,500 2, per subject by four subjects. So if you notice from, from year, year Year one to year two to year three, the fee increased by $250 TT per subject for CTS College. Now, in terms of payment plans, we do have payment plans available. Our payment plan allow you to pay. You could pay up front or you could pay per month. In terms of the monthly payment, let's take a look here. You can pay, now the monthly payment only applies to tuition fee, not the university fees because I have no control over the university fees. So for the tuition fee, you could pay 500 per month for the bridging level and you pay over four months and that's your $2,000. For level four as well, you, you're paying 500 per month per subject. So if, if you, you're doing one subject, you're paying 500 each month at level four. If you're doing two subjects, that's $1,000 a month for four months. And that's basically a payment plan. And the same applies to level five and level six, where we've broken down the tuition into monthly payments of 562.50 at level five per month per subject and 625 per month per subject at level six. Good. So those are the different fees you're paying all right, for tuition. Now we do have a special offer for you guys as well. Now with a special offer, you can receive up to $1,000 off your tuition fees, which is $250 per unit. So a thousand off per level or 250 per unit. So if you're in the bridging program, there's only one unit. So that's, you can get up to 250 off. And if you're in level four, level five, level six, you can save up to $1,000 per unit. And what, what do you need to do in order to qualify for this special offer? So to qualify for this special offer, what it simply means is that you must, now if you're starting in June, this is for those who are starting in June, you should submit your application form by May 31st, which is tomorrow. It's not a lot of time, but the application form is not a very detailed, and I'll guide you through right after I finish this presentation. I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes on the application form so that, you know, once I go through it to you, it should be a lot easier for you to fill. You need to submit your supporting documents by May 31st if you can. If you cannot get all the documents, I'm willing to apply an extension, but remember as well, if you're starting in June, we need to get your application in as soon as possible, and then, the, you have until June 10th, once you're accepted, et cetera, you, you need to pay the tuition and UOB fees by June 10th. Now, the purpose of the discount as well is to encourage the students to pay up front. So what you're doing is you are getting the discount for paying your fees up front before the start of the semester, right? And that's when you get the discount. So you pay up, pay up all your fees before, by the start of the semester, you get the discount. When does classes start? Initially, classes were scheduled to start on June 6th. However, what is happening is that the current students enroll because of the COVID issue, they got an extension. So they have an assignment due now. The semester would have already ended, but their assignment is due on the 12th of June. What we have done, because they would have finished on the 12th of June with their assignment, 
have pushed back the class from starting the 6th of June to the 13th of June. So class start date now will be on the 13th of June. So that's the official start date of class. Okay, any questions at all, guys? I know Ravi Johnson has been assisting me as well with questions, but do you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask at this time before I go into the application form and how to fill out the application form? Okay, anyone? All right, so I'm seeing Ravi Johnson assisting everyone with answering questions as well. Thank you so much, Rav. I really appreciate it also. What I want to do now, I want to show you in terms of completing the application form. So I'm using John Doe as my applicant. So John Doe is applying for the BSc for the program. So let's take a look. So starting at the top here. So let's go to page one. All right, you, what you do, you could take a picture of your signature and you insert it here. So you could, you could take, you could snap it using what, you could snap it on your phone and just um, upload the picture and just paste it into here for your signature, right? You select your, your gender, male or female. You put your date of birth on the side here, right? You have your, your first name, your last name. The passport number is not mandatory, so don't worry about this. By the way, previous family name is ideally if, if you have changed your surname. So often you find that women who got married may have changed their name. This is their maiden name. Or if you have changed your name, this is your previous name here. You, the passport is not mandatory. This is your address here. You could put your address in one line if you wish, or two lines as you see. Don't worry about the postcode if you don't have it. You put your telephone number here, your mobile number here and your email address, your phone, your, your, your home phone, work phone, et cetera, your mobile and your email address. This side is not necessary. So you don't need to complete this side, which is the home address, the home address, unless you actually have two different address, one for where, where you send your correspondence to and one where you actually reside. Then you have, don't worry about the Skype ID, not crucial. Now, this part here, students often have a little challenge with it as well. For here, your country of birth, Trinidad and Tobago, nationality, likely Trinidadian. Country of domicile where you're living is Trinidad and Tobago. These here are really for persons who are studying in the UK. But what you need to do, you still need to fill it out. So are you currently resident in the UK? Ideally, you could put no for all of them, if you wish, right? You could simply put no for all of them. Okay, this part is filled out for you already in the application form. But this is where you need to indicate where you're starting. So please pay attention here. The program is the BSc Information Technology. It's an undergraduate program. Now, if you want to start at, at, at year two or year three, you could simply put it here. So you could put like level four, year one, or level five, year two, or level six, year three. As I said, if you, if you, if you think you don't qualify, just put, you can leave it blank. Leaving it blank means automatically you're considered for year one, which is level four. And of course, if the university don't, don't believe you're fitting for, for level four, then they will, they will indicate so and you'll start the bridging. But ideally, here is where you determine if you're starting at year one, year two, or year three. And of course, if you're doing the June and take it for June 2020. Now, please note, if you're not starting in June, you can still submit your application form. However, you could put like October 2020 and submit it here as well. Okay, and I will still submit your application. It just means you'll be accepted earlier, but you'll be starting later on. Now over here is next. Now, if you did CXE, you don't, you don't necessarily need to put each subject on a separate rule. What you could do for your qualification, you could put secondary. You put when you started, when you finished. So basically five years you would have done it, right? 2019 is when you awarded it. The awarding body is CXC, not, not your school the name, right? It is CXC. How many passes? You put it here. The language was English. If you did other qualifications, this is just an example, please, right? So if you did like Network Plus, you put when you started, when you finished, etc. who you did it with, and the qualification is a completion certificate. Okay, so if you had done like a level five diploma, you would put here, it's an IT qualification. You'll put um, who is it with, like whether it's, a BTEC, HND, whether it's with Roytech, Costat, etc., and you'll put associate degree over here. Okay. All right. Over here now, this is in terms of English. You could simply put none and you could just put CXE English here if you wish. So here you could type in CXE English, right, if you wish to as, as well. Now, it, when you do that, it populates in all the others. Don't worry about that. The form was devised by the university. We just work with it. 
over here, if you have work experience, please include your work experience, even if it is not IT, right? So please include your work experience here. So this, this here is a cash out company, ABC, started in February 2018 until um, February 2020. If it's current, you can leave that out and just put current, right? And you put part-time, full-time. So you put your different jobs here. Now, if you, ha if you have IT jobs, I will suggest you prioritize the IT jobs first, okay? Next, do you have any physical disability? Yes or no? If you do, how did you hear about us? Agent is CTS College, so you can simply click Agent if you wish. And here now, for your referees, a name and an email address is sufficient. The person's name and email address is sufficient. If you don't have the other details, it's not an issue. So it's fine if you don't have their, the company they work for or their address, etc. But name, email address is fine. If you don't have their email address, name and phone number is sufficient as well. Okay? And here you insert your signature here. And that's the end of the application form. I'm more than happy to assist you as well if you need to complete your application form. Now, apart from these, you also need to submit evidence of any other certificates, your resume, a copy of your national ID or passport as well. You only need to submit one, but please submit the one that is not expired. So if it's expired, you know, I prefer to get one that's not expired. You could use your driver's permit as well if you don't have the other two. Okay. So that's your application form. So we've completed the application form as well. And ladies and gentlemen, that brings us now to the end of our session. Are there any questions or so you would like to, to ask that I could facilitate? There was one question, Rob, which I wasn't too sure about. Someone asked, do you get um, certifications after each level or year? All right. Wonderful question. Now, when we, when we initially started pitching the program with the university, this was one of the requirements that I had, that at the end of each level, students would be able to get an interim award. Now, that has not been fully, up, uh, it has not been approved yet by the university. It's ongoing, but they have not approved it as yet. Now, it's not the norm in the UK. So in the UK, you normally have to complete the entire program in order to get your degree. What I'm trying to do is I've brought about some suggested changes to them to make it more, you know, appealing as well to the, to the, to the students enrolling in it. So that was one of the requests I have. Right now, the answer is no, because it has not been approved. It hasn't been rejected. It just hasn't been approved because the approval process is, a, is an entire change to what the university does and therefore it requires a, a, a lot more approval processes to go through. And it's a whole change of culture to the university because their, their system is you finish the full program and then you get a certificate. You don't get it at the end of each level. And I'm trying to change something that is culturally driven as well with them. So I was told that there's a good chance of it happening, but the fact is it's not yet approved, okay? Now, just to answer a question regarding the payment of the university fees and CTS college fees. For those of you paying the fees, you can pay the fees online via online banking. I'm gonna pull up a file, if you just excuse me for a minute, I'm just gonna pull up a file to guide you in terms of payment of the fees as well, right? So in terms of payment of the university fees, there's a file I just want to run through with you. I, I will be emailing you these as well on how to pay your, your fees. So in terms of how to go about paying your fees, there's this guy that we've created for students as well. Now, you, you are paying fees both to CTS College and to the university, but note, when you're paying your university fees, you are not paying it directly to the University of Bedfordshire. You are paying it to CTS College. When we first started this program, students paid, they paid their bank drafts to the university. When we took it to the university, they rejected the draft. They said all draft must come from CTS College. So we had to now give back the students their draft. And if, you, if you're familiar with changing the name on a draft, and because it's a foreign currency, we have to pay the student for the loss of money they get because they have to convert back the draft to TT and then buy back the pounds under CTS College. And we have to absorb all the costs. So all that fees is paid to directly to CTS College instead, and we pay the university. Now, please note, the reason why I ask you to pay the university fees up front is because we are required to pay your fees up front. But you're just paying per semester, but you're paying the university fees at the start of the semester. So we have two accounts. This account, the 1397019, is a TT account, and that's where you pay a CTS registration fee and the CTS tuition fee. This here, the 2106244, is a, is a sterling account or a GBP account. This is where you pay your fees to the university. So what you do to, 
to blah, let's go through the payment of the CTS fees and the university fees. I'll do them separately. If you're paying CTS college fees, then you're paying to the account 1397019, and you could pay that via bank transfer, or you could pay it as a direct deposit at First Citizen. So to pay the TT fee, you could pay it via online transfer, or you could pay it at any bank of First Citizens. Note, we, we are in the third phase of reopening, so we, the school itself is, is closed at the moment, classes are online, but the office is expected to, do, to be open on June 8th. Um, now, the government is going to decide today if they're going to bring, bring forward that date or not, but once the school is open, you can pay at the school as well, but alternatively, almost every, more than 60% of our students are paying with online bank transfer. All right, and some are paying at FCD itself, going to the bank and paying. So to pay a tuition fee, your registration fee, etc., you pay that to this account, the 1397019. If you're paying fees to the awarding body, whether it's University of Bedfordshire, right, then you have to pay it to the 2106244 account, and you're paying that via bank draft, or you could pay it via note. So this is a guide in terms of how to pay, right? So if it's a registration or tuition fee, you're paying to the 1397019, you're paying via online bank transfer. But if you're paying to the university, you're paying to this account and you're paying via bank notes or a bank draft for pounds. So what if you're paying for, on, if, you, if you're paying us, how do you do the online bank transfer? Well, this is the account number here. This is the name of the bank, First Citizens. This is the account number. And this is the, the name of the account, the, the account holder's name. It's a checking account as well. And what I've done as well, I have guide for you in terms of how to pay from Republic Royal, etc. So if you're paying from Republic Royal, this is a guide telling you if you're paying from Republic, the step-by-step -step for Republic Royal, um, Scotia, or First Citizens, okay? Now, what if you're paying the university fees now? If you're paying fees to the awarding body, you would need to go to your bank, you get a bank draft. So the bank draft is made out of CTS College. So it could be, so this is the guide here. So you, you request a bank draft made out of CTS College of Business and Computer Science Limited. In some cases, just CTS College is fine. The bank draft must be in GBP currency. It must be in pounds. And once you have that bank draft, you could either arrange with us to meet to, to collect it from you. Alternatively, you could drop it off at the office once the office is open or you could drop it off to our GBP account. Please don't put it to the TT account because they will take your pounds converted back to TT and it will be a lot less. So when you're taking it to the bank, this is the account that you're using. And our bank is First Citizens. So you could take your bank draft, drop it off to First, First Citizens to this account number. Cool? So that's how you pay the awarding body fees and how, and how you pay the CTS college fees. Any question regarding those two? Okay, so any further questions? I look forward to getting your applications. Just to hear from you guys, there are 16 of us currently present. How many of you, just, just if you could just use the raise hand feature if you wish, right? If you look where your names are in the, in the participants listing, right? You should be able to raise your hands from there. If you can, simply raise your hand to indicate if, if you are applying for the June intake, just to get an idea, or you could type it in the chat. So you could type it in the chat, interested in starting in June. The reason is it will allow me to, to follow up directly with you as well. So for those who are starting in June, if you can in, indicate your name, an email address and phone number, you could private message. So there's the option to private message. Please put your name, phone number, email address, so I can follow up with you if you're looking at starting in June. For those of you who already got the application for, so I got the application from NAV and I got the application as well. Sat, Satya would have gotten the application also and Ariana. So I've got your application. So Peter, I haven't gotten yours as yet. So if you could arrange to submit your application for me as well as, well, Vic, I got yours. Thank you so much. And I think that's okay. Rav, you, you're applying as well. No problem. <laughs> no staff discounts for you, but... <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. What I'll do as well, I'll end the recorded session now. And once it has converted to MP4, I'll upload it to YouTube and I'll make the link available to you guys. So you should get an email before the end of the day with the recording from today's session. Thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. And um, any further question, you could send it to study at ctscollege.com. You could email me or call me as well. I'm putting my number here. 
my cell number, so you could also call me directly if you have any questions. If you send any email to study at CTS College, I'll also be able to pick up on it from there as well. Okay. Uh, question, is it mostly web programming and will we be doing any desktop application? You will be learning Java, which you will do desktop application, and you'll also be doing web applications as well. So to answer Ria's question, so you're doing both desktop application using Java as well as web application using PHP, CSS, HTML, etc., and more scripting language. Great. Have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll be chatting with you guys separately. Peter, don't forget to send your information as well. Thanks a lot. Goodbye, everyone.